All right, D-Lady, ready to roll? Yeah, let's go, Coach. Uh, All right. Hey, we're just uh, uh, getting ready for a day, looking at the center uh, spot. The rationale, well, the rationale is to, to make sure we got the best five guys out there. And so the only way to, to know if you want to make a change or if you feel like there's somebody else that deserves playing time is to play them. So that's the rationale. It, it worked. doesn't necessarily mean we'll do the same thing this Sunday. It just depends on the matchups and what we feel is best for the team. Uh, does it maybe uh, – does Les might make uh, – Make, make Matt play better or? Um... We got a one game sample size. I mean, there's multiple factors that probably helped. Uh, but like every week, the challenge is being consistent. So we'll just have to assess that and see, you know, see what we, how we feel on Saturday. You know, we'll tell them the plan and we'll go with the plan on Sunday. Is that, uh, you know, I guess obviously it looks like a development is, you know, more he can play, the better he'll get faster. Is that part of it also? Well, usually the act of doing something, you know, gets you the reps, helps. But, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to win football games, Eli. So if we didn't think it was something that could help us win football games, if it, it also helps, you know, improve guys in development, then you, the old saying is, you know, kill two birds with one stone, great. But we're ultimately the, the, the goal is every week. It's not about stats. It's about winning. It's about doing what's best for this team uh, short term and long term. So that's really the thought behind it. Pretty, pretty practical, pretty simple. Sure, everything, right. everything's when a factor. Go, go sure, if um, we feel that you know, there's a better potential matchup, then you know, we, we feel like we, we can have a chance to contain them or block them, then we'll go with that. But uh, you know, these guys, you know, the one thing about them being a divisional opponent, there's, there's a lot of familiarity on both, both sides of, of the ball. It's a really good football team. They've got good players across the board. And our guys, you know, they'll be ready to roll Sunday at 1, ready for the challenge. Where do you feel like your team has improved since you saw them in week two? A lot of ways. I mean, we're, you know, finding ways to, to win games. We're 5-2 and two in one possession game. So it was a big thing here. You're trying to build a winning culture. And, again, the ultimate goal is to build a sustainable football team that wins football games. So that's what we're trying to accomplish, short term and long term. Why do you think, maybe, why do you think that this team has struggled at well, we've only played four home games, so small sample size there. Um, number of factors, you know, every game's a different story. So I don't think it's necessarily just being at home. You know, week one, we clearly didn't play well enough. Uh, you know, Carolina, Washington came down to the wire. And then obviously against New England, it was a close game for most of the fourth. And then they, you know, they finished us off. But I don't think it's necessarily just home. But, you know, that's an easy surface narrative to run with, Michael. But we've only had four games and we're going into December. So... It's just the way the schedule is. You go to 17 games, the NFC is playing one less home game. We had a home game in London. So I'm asked correct, that's seven times in our building. And we want to win at home. We appreciate our fans. Our fans did a great job. It was really cool to see down in Jacksonville, a lot of our fans there. Uh, that was awesome. So we, we got we to do our part at home, and we got another opportunity on Sunday. That's how we look at it. Josh, you said Sunday afternoon, I think, that you, you, you can be physical running the wide zone as if at one point that was not the conventional wisdom that maybe wide zone was considered the finesse run scheme. Is that? Well, I, I just think it's yeah, what, my best way to put it. Uh, not accurate narratives. Uh, I think that's the one thing I don't think Alex Gibbs got enough credit for when they went that route. You know, you, you, you read the history of, you know, why it's getting it's practical. I believe it was Jim McNally doing it with Cincinnati. If you go back and look at the history of Alex Gibbs and what I've read, and I didn't know Alex, I appreciate him from afar. I know people have worked with him. Uh, he had a huge impact on the National Football League. But going back, I think a lot of people tried to rationalize Denver's success, and they were a very physical line. They were a little bit smaller. Uh, just a great culture. Obviously, he had success here with the Atlanta Falcons when they were here with Michael Vick and, and the way they ran the wide zone when Alex was here with Jim Moore. So uh, I think there's a lot of false narratives. I think those Denver teams are really physical. And I think sometimes in college, you see some teams that just kind of the way the game's playing up tempo. You're, you know, it's whatever your style is. You're playing a lot of snaps. It's hard to sustain that level of effort for 100 snaps if you're going that fast. So a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, zone, they're just going to lean on them. It's clearly not the case. So that was kind of the point I was trying to make, Josh. Is Gibbs the guy that 
most influenced your thinking on offensive line? Well, I didn't know him. I, I just, you know, in my modern history of my experience in football, I have a lot of appreciation for a lot of coaches and players that made this game what it is. He was somebody that certainly that I aspired to, to study. And uh, like I said, I've worked with people that got the chance to work with him. And I've, you know, even talking to Rich about him when he was here. And just just a big fan of what he what he did. And it was a lot of practical thinking about why he did what he did. And that's usually what, out of necessity, where a lot of good ideas come from. I just don't think there's, any, there's a lot of assistant coaches. Um, no different than my opinion that there's a lot of players that played in the 80s in Washington or played in New England in the last 20 years that deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. And that I think that there's a lot of assistants that deserve that recognition. I know Dick LeBeau got in there. Uh, you know, he, he was a great player and, and a long time coach that had a huge impact. Same way I feel about Alex Gibbs. Physical runner, uh, finish people off, brings a good presence to the run game. Good player. Chris, is there anything you take away from the last time you know, played against the Buccaneers that you saw that you think you can, this team can improve on? Or that sure. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff. There's a, it's every game. Whether you win or lose, I mean, that's the, that's the chess match. That's the beauty of the NFL. Uh, you know, you're going to play, you're going to have tough matchups every week. That's, that's what's fun. It's pro football. They got good players, good coaches. Uh, clearly, you know, they, they won the Super Bowl last year. They're, they're having an excellent season. Uh, there's always stuff to learn from. Every single game, uh, as a coach, as a player, we're always looking to be objective and improve. Uh, so I know you might say no or that those games in, but is there anything specifically you can, you can say that you looked at from that game that you want to improve on? Got to answer your own question. There. <laughs> Appreciate you asking, though. Like, I'm waiting for the injury updates from Michael or Duet, and I'm, I, I, I'm just waiting. You guys are kind of, you guys are, you're off today. <laughs> so. It's the, it's the leftovers. Yeah, the leftovers, the, the Thanksgiving hangover. Yeah. How do you think your business background, or maybe more specifically your family's business background, affects how you approach building a team or even game planning stuff? Well, I don't uh, pretend to, I don't pretend to have a business background. Well, I, uh, you know, I think that I learned long ago, and I've said it many times, and I'll say it again, I've never felt, you know, somebody else in my family's success was my success, certainly not my, my father's. Uh, you know, I try to educate myself on a lot of topics. Um, I, you know, I don't, I just want to learn. I, I don't know. So I, I wouldn't sit here and claim no, just by no. genetics that somehow I'm some great business. No, I'm, I'm a football coach. But so you observed it and you use return on investment. You, you sort of talk <coughs> in those terms. It seems like you see the, wor the world, you see things in, in that sort of structure. And I wonder if you think that's affected the way that you approach. Well, I think everybody's life experience is fact, like your education and background, who you've been influenced by, uh, certainly part of the journey that would, you would hope that you can learn from it. Um, so that's all I've ever tried to do. So if it, if it has, then, you know, it's just been by my experiences. Yeah. Scott, this is your second, you, you're, you're starting to head into your second time through uh, some of these NFC South teams. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's been a long time since you played Tampa, but, but just getting to know the personnel and the coaching styles, it, it, what kind of impact does that have as you're entering into the, the second go-round? Well, I think any time, you know, you're playing in division games the second time around, I mean, there is a lot of familiarity. And that's the that's the thing. I mean, every team's dealing with something. You know, you're a little bit different. You're going to be dealing with some kind of injuries. Uh, you know, it was a little personnel change from the first time you played them, whether you played them two weeks ago or, you know, we're getting them now here in December. Uh, yeah, it, that, that's a challenge. And that's the fun part about the NFL is you, you do have – common opponents as, as you get to know and there's some familiarity in the division, uh, it makes it fun. So, all right, injuries, where is the, what is up with you? Who do you, who do you, who do you got? Who do you got? Who do you got? Okay, well. So, d -Led's still upset that, that they missed, you talking about not adapting the practice squad guys to make sure they're on an injury report. You guys missed that. So when you guys have your committee meeting or subcommittee meeting, you guys should talk about that. Yeah, well, again, I, I just just give it by the rules that they, they give me, ambassador gives me. So, uh, you know, Dion, we'll see. It'll be day to day. Chef, we hope to get him out there today. We'll see what it looks like. Um, Bull, again, it'll be day to day. I, you know, we'll just have to assess, and then Q's back. Uh, we talked about it a little bit before, but just the way that Patterson has going more towards having guys like him in the 
future. Is, is that a possibility? I've said it many times. I mean, I think you're, you're getting guys, a lot of these hybrid athletes. I don't think, you know, you're getting a lot of like youth specialized sports, but as the games evolved, you're getting guys that, um, you know, they, whether they're playing more football, like the seven on seven, the impact that's having, which is really, it's a quasi version of real football that you see here on Sundays. But the guys are playing, they're maybe running more routes than they did when they traditionally they got moved to running back, and that's what you played in middle school or high school, and that's all they played was behind the center. Uh, so I think you're seeing it. You've seen it all over the league. Uh, you know, San Fran, I mean, they started putting Debo Samuel back there. I mean, I think that's Agnew was playing multiple spots for Jacksonville. Uh, I, I just think it's the type of hybrid football players you're seeing around. Same thing with defensively. You're seeing these safeties that play in the, line, in the box, linebackers, uh, safeties that can go out there and, you know, cover man to man. I think that's what, there's an impact, and I think it's the influence of kind of where the game's gone in the last 15 years. Do you think that maybe it takes a different type of player to mentally be able to want to do that and to, to maybe see the buck in, convex, in convention of having a. Sure. Know. I mean, if a guy can't handle that, it would be a. It, he wouldn't get those kind of results. So certainly that plays a factor. Yeah, Coach. Uh, how big was it for DR, for uh, uh, Darren Hall? And Richie Grant to get some really a lot of live action there in the Jacksonville game. Was that bold for them down the stretch here? Well, for anybody, you would hope to build off experiences and, and improve week to week, uh, which it certainly they have. And like I said, the, the challenge is now you you know you got you got to do it another week, and that's the hardest thing to do is to st sustain success in this business. You see it every Sunday. That's the challenge. That's certainly the challenge for for us as a team and them as players. Looking for like a letter grade or something like that? Uh, sure. That was you want you want your hot take comment letter grade. <laughs> Coach Smith thinks of his staff, um, and I don't talk in the third person. I was just saying it as yeah. a joke. So, <laughs> so uh, no, staff's done a great job. So we're going to continue to do that. It never stops. The development process never stops. That sounds like a name. I didn't say that. <laughs> just, just you put whatever you want, uh, whatever can maybe get you another click or two, and we'll roll from there. I just you know we're. Said that we got a good staff, and yeah. and uh, Walker, he you know was a tough spot. I had to go out there and play. Uh, you know, he talked about doing a good job after the game and so forth. How big was that to have that guy kind of? Well, know, that's why you step up in, in that type of situation. Well, it kind of goes into what Scott's asking, and that's why you have you continue to coach every player on the roster, and we continue to bring guys in here and try to develop so we can find the best team as you because you need everybody as the season goes on. That's why I don't have that fixed mindset about, oh, we got this guy week one, that's how it's going to be. Well, maybe if he continues to improve or he may have an injury, different guys, and you gotta, you got to shift your strategy because of who's available and whatnot. Uh, Mike, you know, I don't look at it as, as tough. I look at it as a guy being a professional, which is really the minimum uh, job requirement, but uh, more times than not, guys can't handle it, but Mike's done a nice job. Of being they all, you want guys that want to play, do you like? Mm -hmm. So I never got a problem with a guy that wants the ball more Wants to play more, you want that. You got a problem with people that are content, you know, want to be average. So I give Mike credit because he wants to play and he get an opportunity. I look at it as an opportunity. I look at it as a tough. I think Mike took advantage of his opportunity. He showed up at the ball what, what, 11 times. What, uh, what did he do? I mean, I don't, I don't have to, um, you know, I don't know how to evaluate the linebacker, but how did, what did he do to make him, uh, you know, well, produce? Yeah. Well, as a, to play good defensive football, you need, simple as it is, it's like I said, a lot of things are easier said than done is to play as a unit, to play all 11. There's so many things that can change. You know, motions, making sure you're in the right, right gap in the run game, making sure you, get the, you may, may have to get the right check and certain, certain looks that we may have game plan that week. And that's part of doing your job and being a pro. And he executed well. And then, like everybody, there's always plays you want back as a coach and players. There's always things to improve on. But overall, Mike did a nice job stepping in there. Uh, getting memes back yesterday and, uh, and Andrew. Well, we'll see what it looks like at practice. Uh, you know, Josh coming off the COVID IR. Steven's got a couple weeks. See what it looks like. Is jo with Josh coming back, is that something you could see in other rotation, rotational situations? I think it's going to help us win. Every option's on the table every week. Just like we put CP. We're trying to find more packages for him on defense. <laughs> Anything else? That, that's, that's you saw him play last week, right? Yeah. <laughs>
be out there? We'll see if, we, the, if the package that the team puts in for them, if it, we think it's going to help us, we'll, we'll put it out there. All right, appreciate it. All right, Thank you. Thanks.